to be spent in those categories. That is just how we came up with that amount. We felt like bus drivers should make more than our local maintenance guys because they have to have a specialized license, they're on the road, and they're contractors. We felt like you needed money above what you would make for wear and tear, and then we felt like you needed money to start saving for a bus. Do you have to turn in receipts? No. This is, you are going to get a check for 2000 $385.33 if you're a short route for nine months. Use it as you need. Long routes is 65 miles or more. We figured it an extra hour a day. Wear and tear longer bus routes, so more wear and tear. Same for the bus savings, $26,400 or $2,933.33 per month. <coughs> The contract also spells out that each year a 2% raise will be given. The raise will be given to the total amount because the others are just numbers we use to figure what we thought would be an um, adequate amount. There was a question when my child be getting on the bus at 5.30. Most routes will not change at all and certainly not drastically. Short routes that are combined will result in some students riding the bus longer, but not longer than any a student on another route. So Mr. Harville, I think you probably start the earliest. And so we won't ever start a child on a route any earlier than he is already starting his bus route. So when we combine the two shorter routes, some kids are gonna have to ride longer, but they're not gonna have to ride longer than his bus is already riding. The three eliminated routes will minimally impact the other routes. Somebody coming down Highway 14 will have to turn off on one of the state roads and pick up one student if we combine routes 10 and 11. Right, that hasn't been determined what bus will do that yet, but that would be the only change to that Highway 14 route. How will I know my route? <clears throat> the district will be providing maps for each route and meeting with each awarded contractor. You'll notice your contract is for 171 days. We just voted for the school calendar to be 168 days. So you still will be paid for 171 days. That gives you some time to run your routes, set the times, do what you need to with parents to let them know what time you'll be. And then also we will ask you to come to something different, open house this year, and we will set up bus tables so that students can come meet their bus driver 
parents can say, this is Billy, he'll ride the bus once a week to my mom's house, only on Wednesday afternoons I wanted you to meet him and I want to make sure you know where my mom lives, just to give a little time for that. Um, if you have a preference for your route, specifically put it on your request for qualifications. <coughs> Why don't we pay just insurance if the district can get it cheaper? And we just cannot, through our insurance company, buy insurance for independent contractors. I sign a five-year contract and I can't complete it. I think the question said because of health reasons. Maybe it's health reasons, maybe it's because you move out of town. Maybe you just don't want to complete it. If that happens, there will be no penalty assessed to you as, as the contractor. As long as it's a mutually agreeable reason to quit, there will be no penalties. You also have the option of keeping your contract and hiring a subdriver to fill it out, finish it. You just need to have that subdriver approved by the board. If you choose to just leave it and walk away, that route will be advertised in the media and the RFP process will start again. If we cancel a route mid-contract because of ridership, let's say Gainesville votes in the whole southern half of the county, and that becomes Gainesville School District. We don't need that route anymore. We will pay you the remainder of your contract in full. So if that happens year two, you'll get paid for three, four, and five. Why is the district paying for fuel? There's no special reimbursement rate for the district. All expenses go into a pot called expenses. So it doesn't matter if we are paying contracted services, fuel, um, radios, um, GPS units, all expenses are counted the same and we turn those expenses into DESI. We believe that if we could bid fuel locally with a larger volume, we would be able to save money. <coughs> Somebody asked, what is the net pay? That is a really difficult question because that is a very relative term. Are we talking net pay if we take off your expenses? Are we talking net pay if we take off the average expense of a bus for Ava? Are we talking net pay after you itemize your taxes and include lots of expenses that you're allowed to as a business owner? So we talked about that this morning in the meeting. Our average district bus repair is 26.86.16. Talking to drivers, a $3,000 breakdown was a pretty big breakdown. So this could be considered net before you include all the extra expenses you're able to deduct from your taxes. Who is responsible for what costs? The contractors are responsible for the bus investment, maintenance, insurance, gas exceeding route allowance. So if you need to take your bus to Springfield three times to get the transmission fixed on it, I guess you wouldn't be driving it if the transmission was out, but if you had to drive your bus somewhere to do something for maintenance, you would be responsible for that additional gas. We just pay for the gas for your route. <coughs> Inspection fees, physicals, background checks, and the majority of those could be deducted on your taxes as well. The district will pick up fuel for routes, all the training, the GPSs, and radios, the two-way radios will be district cost. Insurance, the contract is for five years, it says $1 million, and this is the contract draft that will be presented to the board for approval. It will not change above one million unless the federal government and state government comes in and says you have to have a new regulation, you have to do that. Have they ever done that? No, so do I anticipate that? No, but we can't be locked in and not um, have a loophole that if federal or state regulations change. Insurance will not be reimbursed and the district must be, as it always has been, listed as an additional insured certificate holder. Other questions that I don't know the answers to is why are there so few insurance providers for bus drivers? Um, will insurance go up if there's a bus accident? 
I would predict if there was a horrible bus accident that killed a bunch of students, insurance rates are gonna go up. I think insurance went up for houses after the Joplin tornado. So something catastrophic certainly could cause that. How am I protected if dropped or coverage is refused? Where will mileage start? We turn in eligible mileage. That's your odometer reading. So that is from wherever you park your bus to school and wherever you park your bus back. So if you drive your school bus for school use only, that's your odometer reading. Those are our eligible miles. The route mileage for the 65 and under and 65 and over will be your first designated stop Proceed down your route, pick enough students travel to school until your bus is empty, and then we'll double that for your PM route, and that will be how that is determined. That's how we do it currently. Are we required to install GPS two-way radios? Every bus will be equipped with this at the district's expense. The only thing the contractor would be responsible for is maintaining it from being ruined or vandalized. So if your bus was parked somewhere and it was vandalized, your insurance would probably take care of that, but we would expect you to replace that. It remains the property of the district and it must be on the bus that's operated daily. <clears throat> that's for safety. Um, this year we had a bus breakdown. If they would have had a two-way radio, we could have gotten students here faster because buses were going nearby. So the best thing about two-way radios, it goes out to every bus. So if we have a lost student that went sneaking home on somebody else's bus that nobody knows, we don't have to call every driver trying to track down that student. One phone call can get that out and taken care of. Are you required to install cameras was a question submitted. <clears throat> As a blanket policy, no, but we reserve the right to do that. Sometimes we do that for student discipline when you have a parent that just insists that their student is being bullied or picked on or the driver's not doing anything, at the district expense, we'll put a camera on that bus and monitor that. Do we have to have a spare bus? No, you don't. We have them available for contractors. It's based on mileage right now. The average has always been right around $100 a day. Depends on how long your route is. <coughs> Inspections, will contractors have to take their buses to Springfield? You will have to take it somewhere that's licensed and allowed by the state of Missouri. If that turns out to only be in Springfield, you would have to take your bus to Springfield. Will the district absorb the required expenses for safety measures? In the media, I hear a lot about seat belts on buses. So if they ever passed a state law that said all Missouri buses must have seat belts, we would not expect you to incur that expense on your own. So that would be negotiated and an extra allowance would be negotiated by the district to cover some state or federal regulation that caused a drastic change to your existing bus. Can the district pull my contract at any time? you have a major traffic violation like a DWI, yes we could. If you had inappropriate behavior with a student, yes we could. If you failed to turn in your required paperwork, yes we could. If you had a wreck, would we? If you were drunk driving and attentive driving, it's possible. If you were going down a dirt road and you met a huge dually pickup and you clipped mirrors or you hydroplaned on the highway, no. You know, if it was Negligence, yes. If it was an accident, no. Is the school board going to change this in five years when the contract's renewed? This board cannot be bound by the Board of Education in five years, but based on our experience with other vendors, the only changes are changes in regulations. Are we still exempt from DOT physicals? Yes, as long as that's allowed by DESI. If DESI ever comes in, DESI is the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education that says bus drivers must have DOT physicals, we will have to enforce that as well. 
Do I see that changing? No. Can I get sued? Yes. Everybody will get sued if you're in a bus accident. You'll be sued, we'll be sued. If your bus accident was caused by a tire blowout, the tire company will be sued, the county will be sued for not having the road smooth enough. The person that put your tires on will be sued. Everybody will be sued. What is the hourly rate for trips? It's 1063 per hour. So if you choose to drive activity trips, you will be at the rate of 1063. And you will have taxes taken out of that because that is actually a part-time employment of the district. And you are welcome to do that, but not required. Is there an age limit on the bus? The contracted bus must meet the minimum Missouri standards for the year it was manufactured, just as we do now. It has to pass the 60 days prior to school inspection and the annual Missouri Highway Patrol inspection. One question that wasn't asked, but we have it on the proposed contract, is to take away the passenger size limitation. So as long as you can provide a bus that adequately hauls all the kids that typically ride your bus, that would be fine. Sometimes you can find those buses easier than the larger buses. Will taxes be taken out of our checks? No. You report your income to the IRS. We give you a 1099, and the district will not deduct any taxes. The district does not file tax returns with the IRS, but we will turn the expenses in to DESE for some state reimbursement. <coughs> How are we going to get paid for snow days? Snow days, tornado days, flood days, power outage days, whatever the reason, you will get paid for 171 days. If it's a five-year contract, why is it renewed annually? This has changed since I met with the committee today and reviewed the um, motion and the motion said it was a five-year contract so it will be a five-year contract the only thing that will be renewed annually is we are required to approve our routes and return and turn those into desi as a board motion and the district requires drivers to be approved annually. so that will happen so yes uh, I thought there was a question on here. What if only a couple people did on these routes? We talked about that at our subcommittee meeting. We don't have an answer to that. We've got to be a board decision, so I, I'm not going to address that because I don't have an answer. We, as a subcommittee, we've talked about we will advertise it more than one round. Is there any other questions that was uh, presented that you haven't asked besides that? I combined some, so if I missed them, I just did it through this interpretation. But as a committee, we sat down and reviewed them all to make sure they were in there. I had one set that was turned in a day late, and we still included those. <coughs> Is there going to be town routes only? There might be. The inspections are in Springfield. Are you going to pay for the fuel and take it up to Springfield, or is the driver going to pay for that? No, all inspection costs will be the driver. We're okay. The combination routes, uh, ones that you combine, it doesn't say which will it. Drivers pick up off of edges, other routes, or will the two combined pick up all of the children on that route? I will, I will clarify questions that were submitted because I'm comfortable doing that, and that was one of them. I'm just going to use this as an example. Route <coughs> 10 and 11, both of those go at down FF. They overlap for a chunk of the time, but not the whole time. So we'll be able to combine those two together. But somebody coming down 14 Highway. We'll have to turn off on BEV, I believe it is, and pick up. There's one student there because that will save some time on their route. So we'll determine which route coming down 14 is the shortest route and add that to the state. 
extra stop to theirs. So that route that is going to be coming up VV, will they have to backtrack out then? Or will they come on up VV? So what other words? Yeah, Al, no, Alvis comes up. It's Alvis. He goes down FF. Uh -huh. He goes through the Crystal Way, mm -hmm. and he comes back out up on VB. Mm -hmm. Okay, when he gets down to Crystal Way, he's coming around to 14. Oh, yes, at VB to 14. Mm -hmm. So will he backtrack back out from? I haven't drawn it. I just I don't want to say that. Because what's the sense in bringing a bus down off 14? If that bus is not, that bus would have to backtrack out at some point uh -huh. or else come on up to the yeah. So maybe it's not VV. Maybe, Pardon? Maybe it's not VV that wants to work together. I have it wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't have an answer without knowing the state highway for sure. Yeah. Well, you see, you see what I'm asking is he goes down FF because I've, I've driven that route. It goes down to FF, past Crystal Lake, all the way back down to where Brent Lakey lives, Patsy Lakey down comes in that area. On the and then he comes back out of there and he turns left and goes up VV up to 14. Well, if he doesn't do that, then he's going to have to backtrack all the way I back think, out to Patsy Lakey. Brent right. I think that he comes out on 14. Pardon? I think he will continue coming, that route will continue coming out on 14. So then, then you didn't bring the route off 14. Well, well, there was, he still would go right by it, but we thought his route might be too long. We thought we might have done that one stop to somebody else's route that's a little shorter. Keep kids on the bus a little less time. Where do you get this one stop down there on BB? At the end of BB, Stephanie Robertson's old house. But Jackie goes plumb back to uh, Daryl Porter's. Uh, that's how bring ladies. Uh -huh. You can come by the office and look at the map. Yeah, we go by Brent Lakey's house. Yeah, that's about 10 miles to 14 Highway down through there and back. Yeah, right. You're going to add that to one of the longer routes and then not paying nothing for it. We're actually combining two short routes. All right. Well, if you have other questions, my phone number is on there and you guys know where my office <coughs> is. Thank you for coming. When can we get a copy of the routes? Them all except for eight and nine. So, Monday? What's the date? What is the date? It's Monday. It's the 11th. The 11th. The 11th. The 14th. And they can each have a copy of all the way up? Sure. So it's yes. still going to be on private roads? Yeah. Yes. Now I started up on top of Dogwood Hill. If they're going to buy my fuel, it'd be no use for me to have to start buy another car and drive it back and forth. But they're going to pay my fuel to come home because. That's a long way from here to the top of the hill, hey, but if you add that on a short route, that'd be a kid a long route, so. Well, the route is determined off from your first stop to school. Uh, well, when you start paying, Desi starts paying from school to the top of the hill, should be included, should be a long route. We can look at that when you come in. You see what I mean? Yeah, we'll look at that when you come in. It's a long ways up there, and it's a long way to these other places to go out there, too. Well, be something to have to think about. Get that up there, might not go more than my mother and park there. So you'd be up pretty good. All right. Thank you guys. How'd you like that voter turnout? Great. We should get that good. for the president. Everybody got you up. Maybe. <laughs> 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 
Did she say a board meeting that we didn't go down a private line? No.